So in this video we're going to look at how aircraft follow the curvature of the Earth and that this is achieved by simply maintaining altitude. I have addressed this topic already on my channel a number of times but it seems there are still flat earthers out there who just don't get it. To follow the curvature of the Earth an aircraft just has to maintain altitude. How easy is that? No descending is required. This is a mistake that flat earthers have been making for years and they're still making it. I'm seeing videos and comments by flat earthers claiming that aircraft have to descend to follow the curvature. Nothing could be further from the truth. The correct way to follow the curvature of the earth is to maintain a constant altitude and that means no descending. And this is really just basic geometry. It's so simple a child could understand it. If we have a basketball and we put our finger one inch above the basketball and we maintain that distance of one inch as we move around the basketball we are following the curvature. We are not getting closer to the basketball we are keeping that distance of one inch and by doing so we are following the curvature. And it is the same with an aircraft. Here is a diagram you may remember from a recent video. We see the curvature of the earth and we see this line representing the intermediate segment minimum altitude. You will notice that that altitude is curved also because it is equidistant at all points from the surface of the earth. If we are flying at 40,000 feet above the surface of the earth and we fly for a thousand miles maintaining 40,000 feet above that surface at all times, we must have followed the curvature. So for the aircraft to follow this constant altitude line which is curved, there is no descending required. If the aircraft descends it is not maintaining altitude, it is getting closer to the ground and if it continues descending it will hit the ground. To follow curvature no descending is required. What I have here is an actual GPS track log from a recent trip from the USA back to Australia from my Bad Elf GPS plotted in Google Earth and there you can see that the red line is representing the flight path of the aircraft and you can see it is maintaining the same distance above the surface of the earth at all times. It is not descending, it is maintaining altitude and that is how it is following the curvature. If we zoom out, you can see the entire log. So when we fly our aircraft, we select the assigned cruising altitude. And there you can see 41,000 feet. That is the indication of the selected altitude. It doesn't matter if we are hand flying the aircraft or if it is on autopilot, the objective is to maintain that altitude. If we notice that the aircraft has climbed slightly, we will lower the nose to regain the desired altitude. If the aircraft has descended, we will raise the nose slightly to correct. Now when you're hand flying, you will constantly be making these adjustments with reference to the altimeter. When the aircraft is on autopilot, it is constantly making very tiny corrections to keep that altitude generally within 20 feet of the assigned altitude and quite often even more accurate than that. The adjustments are so small they are almost imperceptible on these instruments. You won't really see an attitude change. The vertical speed indicator here will rarely move and the altitude indication will appear to be fixed. But when we look at the air data computer in the aircraft we can see more accurately what is occurring. And we can see the information from the air data computer in the flight management system on air data 2 page. Here we can see calibrated airspeed, true airspeed, mark number. And here we see pressure altitude very accurately being indicated from the altimeter, 41,006 feet. This VS represents the vertical speed and you will see as the video plays 
that this is constantly changing from a small climb to a small descent to keep the altitude as close as possible to the assigned value of 41,000 feet. The aircraft is constantly making corrections. There you can see it's changing, slight climbs and slight descents and these are so small they are imperceptible to the pilot but the objective is to maintain that altitude as precisely as possible. And by simply making these frequent small corrections during the course of a flight the aircraft will be maintaining altitude and therefore it will be following the curvature of the earth. So I'll play a number of clips now and you can see for yourself the information from the air data computer on the FMS page and how often the aircraft is correcting. In part of the footage I look through the head-up display and what I'd like you to notice is this indication here which is the vertical speed currently showing zero. Now the resolution here is only 50 feet per minute so if the corrections are less than that it will show zero. You can see it more accurately in the FMS but as we fly you will notice there are a couple of times where we do have a slight descent or a slight climb as the aircraft is maintaining very precisely the assigned altitude here of 45,000 feet.
So as you could see very clearly, the aircraft is making constant small corrections to maintain altitude precisely. That is all we need to follow the curvature of the Earth, to maintain a constant altitude. If you encounter any flat earther still claiming that aircraft have to descend, please feel free to show them this video. And one of the most ridiculous claims I have seen from a flat earther on this topic is that he believes the aircraft would be descending so rapidly that the passengers would be thrown to the roof of the aircraft. And that just demonstrates that he has no understanding of how to apply mathematics to the real world. Several years ago, our good friend Walter Bislin produced this calculator titled Centrifugal and Gravitational Acceleration in an Aircraft. And with this calculator, you can determine accurately just how much centrifugal force is being generated by the aircraft following curvature. And you will see that even flying east with the rotation of the Earth, it is no more than about 1%. So for a 100 kilogram person, the weight would reduce to 99 kilograms. It would not even be noticeable and not even close to lifting a person out of their seat. Check out Walter's calculator. I'll put a link in the description below.